<laughs> well, I'll tell you where on YouTube, yes, indeed. Okay, so let me tell you who you're talking to here. It's all these folks. And uh, what they are there, actually there's three classes here. Who's here from Monday? Who's here from Tuesday? Who's here from Wednesday? Okay. So how, how are they different? Um, the Monday and uh, the well, the Monday class isn't here, so we don't talk about them. So the Tuesday class and the Wednesday class are both almost exactly the same class. Um, it's called from beginning photographer to exhibiting artist, and the other one's called from beginning photographer to exhibiting HDR artist. What do you hear? High dynamic range photography. It's the next big leap after the invention of color film, which just occurred a couple of years ago. But in any case, we're talking about silver. We're talking about black. You have to tell me about that. Okay. <laughs> we'll talk about it next. Yes. <laughs> but indeed, um, what they have done theoretically is about six or seven weeks ago, they started this class. Theoretically, they never took a picture before, or some of them are kind of advanced. That's this, healthy. Healthy. That's healthy. That's what I think. Yeah. In fact, this fellow, this is actually the second time he's taken the same class in a row. How can you fail? I didn't fail. I just want to continue. I just want to continue. I didn't fail. Oh, good. Yeah, it's still working. He's far <laughs> from failing. Very far from failing. Thank you. In any case, looking at your work here, I am just so taken with it. And I have a feeling that they have some questions for you. I'll ask the first one. Thank God. <laughs> no, no, no. Quite seriously. You got to understand the, the, con the context. Uh, I'm older by three times than any of you could possibly be. I'm older than I look, fella. I know. <laughs> Which means I go back to 8x10 view cameras, I go back to gelatin material, I go back to Ansel Adams, who I was an assistant with. Minor White in the early days, and I photographed quite extensively and worked in silver up until about 20 years ago. And then I took a Haid. Why? Because when you travel as far as I have and you have as intimate an experience with nature as I've had, I began to become concerned about what we were doing to impact that world. And I dropped photography and all the other things I did. And I became for 30 years an environmental activist in every way imaginable. I sat on federal, state committees, every kind of local agency, because I wanted to really leave this earth having made a difference. Photographers take only few ever give back. Uh, Ansel was criticized once when Folger Coffee used one of his photographs on a campaign. Buy a can of Folger Coffee with one of Ansel Adams' pictures on it, we'll plant a tree. Little did the critics know, as a result of that, 1.9 million trees were planted. And that's why he did it. There have been a few occasions like that, but not that way. So what happened after 20 years? Uh, once you make photographs, it's not so much as a photographer, but in the connection that it reflects coming from the dynamic of nature, which is obviously what I do. I got the hankering to get back to it, only to discover that silver wasn't going to be the way. Digital wasn't mature enough for my standards, <clears throat> meaning that silver I had taken to a very, very profound degree of eloquence. And I was hired by other photographers to produce that portfolio. It is remarkable. The photograph at the very end of this wall, taken when I was 20 years old, uh, it took 45 years. I had printed it with children. Then when I discovered digital, scanned that negative and started working with it. 45 years later, I finally got the picture that reflected the experience I had when I was 20. 
So I struggled with digital for two or three years. I tested. I, I worked with George DeWolf, who was a student and a friend of mine who's a master of Finally, about three or four years ago, I conceded that I might be able to do something with it. So I really worked my ass off. <laughs> uh, and when I say that, if you had me as a teacher, when I was actively teaching, you would probably swear it. Because I had a certain rule that I wouldn't look when a class came at less than 50 pictures. And we wouldn't talk very much, but I would bring what an experience I had with Anthony, which was wonderful. Here I was working for this guy. I had to produce 25 pictures a day. When I showed it to him at 8 o'clock at night, he had a waste paper basket here and a desk here, and he would throw them into the waste paper basket until only about three pictures of Belgium. He said, put those up in places that will surprise you. Inside of your closet, inside of a cabinet. I mounted one underneath the toilet bowl seat. Because the whole idea is we get so conditioned to wanting the picture to be the way we think it should be, that we never get to see it. And we also argue ourselves into believing we did something when in fact what we did was nothing. All the words on earth won't help you. All the terms won't help you. What it takes is intuition and a very open heart and a willingness to be surprised and taught by your own image. So I learned how to do digital in the last year. I think I scanned 285 pictures. Uh, and then started printing, and then got connected again with people who asked me to have me. So what you see on the wall, like this one, is a straight digital image with a camera and printer. The one behind you uh, was taken with a 4x5 view camera, negative scan, but printed digital. So they will vary. But I would say about 80% of them are digital, original images, and some were negative scan and then printed digital. I will not go back into a doctor. Uh, the chemistry is very, very powerful, and my, my patience is too short. My silver prints took an average of 50 hours to make, one after another after another. So the standards were pretty fuzzy. Uh, these take a long time also. Uh, they're printed, they're put up, they're looked at, and then they naturally will begin to speak. I think the distillation of a statement is in what I wrote down there at the end, which you can look at afterwards. Um, in it, I make a very strong statement which goes contrary to schools and teaching. In essence, I don't believe I do a damn thing about making a photograph happen. All I do is show up and I'm in a state of receptivity and openness and the image takes me and I can't do anything but push the button. Everything else, as far as I'm concerned, are very strong intellectual ideas that take you further and further away from your heart and your essence and turn you into what everyone else does, which is to make a photograph. Photographs are made. They're discovered. So, next question. <laughs> we have time for one more question. Oh boy. Who's got one? I can slow down. Yeah. Now, if you don't have a question, that's healthy. <laughs> Is this palette what you use all the time, or is this what? for this series? What? This, this color palette, white, black, and white. Yeah. No. Interesting, interesting point. You'll read down there that I make the, the, the concept. Photographs don't result from preconceived compositions, ideas of scale, which is the size and relationship of components. Uh, organization, which is another term for composition. Fourth, tonal scale. That photograph, right in the middle, uh, right 
light run, fundamentally different tonal scale than the one right over here or in the other. And lastly, color. In silver, you have choices of toner. In digital, you also have choices of toner. It depends on software you're using. Silver Effects uh, Pro 2 gives you just about every toner, including selenium, which is a classic, in silver with the digital. So what I said down there is each visual statement commands its own scale, organization, balance, and color. There's no thematic continuity whatsoever, except in a way of seeing and a way of feeling. I mistrust, and he's a wonderful, wonderful photographer, and so when you look at Mr. Adams' work, they all identically have the same tonal scale, organization, color, and we used to print them in standard selenium printing. And yet, emotionally, there are those that want a different approach. Okay? Um, I don't photograph as a thematic element. Okay? I'm more drawn to the natural scene than I am to people. But you can have an exhibit like this with people, doggies, insects. It doesn't matter. The subject matter is irrelevant. Uh, it has to do with your relationship. And it can't be forced to whatever you're naturally drawn to is what you should work with. And it's interesting because I used to teach at MIT and that couldn't have been a more left brain structure. Brilliant, brilliant people. And I had to figure out a way of trying to work with them so they could understand something. The last thing that understanding results with is a lot of didactic left brain talking. So the only way I could do it was I ran a graduate course for three months in which we couldn't say a single word, including me. Everything had to either be movement, gesture, grunt, drawing, dance, toilet paper storm, whatever. It was as much of a, a, a challenge for me as it was for the 20 students I was working with. But you would not believe the evolution of understanding that took place. And at the end, there was very little they could say, but their work reflected a tremendous insight. So, be careful of words. They are very seductive in our society. They have a tendency to replace experience. <laughs> experience is not words. Okay. And on that note, I want to thank you so very, very much. Very impressive. The thank work. you. It's truly beautiful. Okay. Truly stunning. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Enjoy. Enjoy living and then photograph. <laughs> <laughs>